So 10 big games to come, but the six games that appeared to have uh, heralded the end of Brendan Rodgers' time as Leicester manager include just taking one point from a possible 18 in their last six and some pretty heavy defeats in there by Manchester United and by Chelsea. Um, are you surprised, Shay, that Leicester have, have made this decision at this stage of the uh, season? Surprised because they had a poor start to the season and there was a, there was a time when they were really struggling. They thought, oh, maybe that's the time to, to move the manager on, but they didn't do that and it looked like he would see the season out and think get back again in the summer. I mentioned, I think, at, at half time when the news broke or whatever, that he's not been back in the market in the last 18 months to two years. So I think it's been, been a tough couple of years for Brendan and for Leicester because before that they were back in the manager giving lots of money for players and stuff. So it feels like the rug's been pulled from underneath his feet a little bit. I think he's a top manager. I think he'll get another job. He'll be probably top of the list for other jobs on the lookout in the next couple of months. But all the teams down there, look before five or six, seven teams have all changed the manager this season because it's high stakes to stay in the Premier League. Yeah, there have been 12 managerial changes, which is two more than any other Premier League season changes that have taken place in season and we'll talk about maybe what next for Brendan Rodgers in a second but what next for for Leicester because the manager who's the the bookies favorite is Rafael Benitez is that the kind of manager that they need um I don't know um I mean look the results are poor but the goal they conceded yesterday was in the 95th minute does he keep his job if the goal doesn't go in the 95th minute that's the fine lines of football we all know how it works um, I think Brendan's done a good job there over the period that he's been there, but there is some real panic going on down there. There are some clubs down there who can't afford to go down and it would cause them massive problems. And that's where the sort of, if you like, the gulf between sort of the Premier League, the reason that you need a parachute is because the drop's that big. And these owners, to be fair, panic like crazy at the end of the season. And I'm, I'm not blaming them for panicking like crazy. They're damned if they do and damned if they don't. Sometimes you stick with the manager and it works and sometimes it doesn't and vice versa. It's a bit of a lottery. But the feeling obviously is there that Brendan, they need something else to send the messages to the players at the end of the season. Rafa Benitez, I'm not going to say that's a good appointment for Leicester. I, I don't feel like saying that. But on the other hand, he's got experience. In other words, you don't think it is? <laughs> no, I just, you know, I, to be honest with you, I just feel that, you know, some managers hover around clubs and you feel like they're sort of ready to move in and pounce in. I think Rafa's a little bit like that. And so if he gets the job, great. I wish him all the best. It's a tough job, but I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, I'm sort of jumping up and down about it. It's, it's football. It's the sort of merry-go-round and roundabout that we sort of witness and live on. It's the, 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 the thing as well, it's not just with the manager, there's a lot of situations with players. I think Tillemans is out of contract, uh, Madison they're talking about is probably going to be leaving the summer. You've got uh, Jamie Vardy who's been incredible for that club, can't keep going. It, it's going to need a revamp as well in terms of, so they've probably looked at it, we've got 10 games to go, it's just vitally important that we stay up and then make sure we can recruit well because it's not, it wasn't easy for him. You know, and you look at the games they've got coming up and when you talk about the teams, but for whatever reason, Leicester doesn't really get that much of a mention because we believe they, they've got this, you know, they've done it so many times in the past. We've won FA Cups, won Premier Leagues in the last few years. They've done incredible things there. But right now, you look at those fixtures and think, well, there's, there's a few that aren't too bad. You look at the Villa and Bournemouth game, but when you're in a rotten run and your confidence is lower than the snake's belly, it's, it's really tough and every game is so hard. So it's very difficult to be picking out games that you think you're going to get any any, any points there. And if, are they going to get in a temporary manager? Are they going to go for someone long-term? There aren't that many great managers out there. I think timing as well, Kelly, is key. They can't, they can't afford to wait a week or, or test the market or they have to hit get someone in straight away. Them two next games are absolutely massive. If a manager can come in the next 24 hours, get them going, get them playing and get them safe because that's, that's a worry and the alarm bells are going off, as, as Gary says, at Leicester at the minute and it's a real chance he can go down to the championship. What about Brendan Rodgers? Is, you said, Shay, you think there'll be clubs who would be interested in, yeah. in taking him on. There are clubs, there is a club that has been interested in Brendan Rodgers before who is looking for a manager. Yeah, there was there was dialogue with Tottenham a few years ago with, with Daniel Levy and, and that was something that maybe they'd have looked at and thought they can, they can go that route. It, it didn't work out at the time. Um, but it, feel, it does feel like they've, they've, they've pretty much made a stamp. They're going to go with Stellini to the end of the season. For me, that's a really strange move considering he was, he was there with a previous manager. I don't think that makes any sense to me. And I, I think actually we'll probably learn a lot more after tomorrow night. If, if they were to go to Everton and get three points, there's every chance they'll stick with it. I think you're doing that game, Gary. And, and it might be a situation to go, we're in a good position here. We can, we can still get top four. The players will take care of this. If they were to lose tomorrow, they might look and go, you know what, Brendan, and Rogers is a good manager. He's won things. He knows what he's doing. He's very close to winning the Premier League many years ago with Liverpool. He knows what he's doing and players really seem to respond to him. So Tottenham might 
might look at that one as well. But who knows? Football's mad. It's, but it's, but it's bonkers. We never know quite know what can happen. Would you look at that one as a possibility? Yeah, I think I would because I, I, I was surprised that Stellini was giving the job to the end of the season. I just thought all the staff of Conte would leave with him. Uh, and I thought that Pochettino or Nagelsmann would be put in at Tottenham straight away. And that's why Daniel Levy waits his time to line up someone before Conte obviously was sacked. You know, with Brendan now mutually agreeing to leave, has it been that there has been an agreement that he's got a little nod and a wink that he could get the Tottenham job? We don't know and we're speculating. And don't think, by the way, there's any inside track here from me. There, there absolutely isn't. But I think that, that you just put two and two together in football sometimes and think, well, that could happen. And, you, you know, we know Daniel Levy in the past has courted Brendan Rodgers, so we don't know. It could happen this week, you know, whether that would be right for Tottenham. He's a good coach, Brendan Rodgers. He's done some good jobs at Liverpool and Leicester, really good yeah. jobs, obviously, at Celtic as well.